Greetings from Costa Rica. A lot of people ask me which area of this country I recommend as the best spot for them to relocate to. And today I want to answer that a question as efficiently as possible through my 10 minute spiel. Thanks very much for tuning in. My name is Matt Rosenstiel, AKA Costa Rica Matt. And to quickly get to the point, the question is impossible to, for me to answer for any one person. And in fact, I would highly recommend virtually any area of Costa Rica, save some pretty dicey urban spots to anyone exploring this country. But it absolutely depends on what your priorities are. Whenever somebody gives me this question, I really start focusing on a, the broad swath of reasons they might be moving to Costa Rica to try and pick out which region or which area in Costa Rica might be a good fit for those goals. Here are some of the priorities that I ask my clients about. First and foremost, if they are moving to Costa Rica with kids, if you're bringing your family down here, and if you hope to do anything except homeschool those kids, it's very easy to tell people that they're focused from the start should be finding the best private school for their kids the one that fits their needs, and then finding a location that allows them to live close by. If you're a parent, the best area for relocation in Costa Rica, simply put, is going to be an area very close to that private school. And the reason I structure my question that way is because the, the private school options are absolutely going to be the limiting factor for your search for a location that would work well for your kids. Shockingly, I do meet parents who are first and foremost focused on getting a good surf break or they want to get that property with a spectacular ocean view. And I think that that can end in a ton of heartache because there are so few private school options available in any one area. If you go looking for that perfect view and then you force your kids to go to the closest private school that's available, you may find out that very soon they're miserable and you have to look for an exit strategy, which can be complicated in Costa Rica to say the least. If your priority as somebody looking to relocate is to find a vibrant expat community, if you really need to have a social life and daily engagement with other people from North America, then there are only a few areas of Costa Rica that will really work for you 365 days of the year. You'd find areas in Playas del Coco in Northwest Guanacaste. In general, the area surrounding the Guanacaste airport would be one of those hubs where you could find enough social activity to have daily interaction with expats all year round. You'd also find another hub down near Nosara. And there is an expat hub quickly growing in the central Pacific, Hako and its related beaches. Uh, you'd absolutely be able to find expat communities there where your social life would satisfy that need 100%. There are a few places in the Central Valley as well, Atenas, etc. But overall, if you do really want to have a social life and your priority is being able to interact with other people, that can be the limiting factor for you where you're focusing only on the spots in the country where you find those concentrations of expats that are great enough. Costa Rica may look small on paper, but it's the size of West Virginia. And if you don't end up living close to a good enclave of people that you can relate to, it can be difficult to get out and find another social enclave. If your priority is to find cooler temperatures in Costa Rica, you should absolutely look for high altitudes. And I'm not just talking about a 300 foot high hill near the ocean. I'm talking about going up into the central valley of Costa Rica because truly the effects of that altitude are only felt when you get a lot of altitude between you and those hot temperatures. If you want to live out near the beach and have access to surf, the ocean, etc., I don't think you will find a hill high enough within a one hour drive of any beach 
where you would find significantly cooler temperatures. If your priority is going to be maintaining a lifestyle back in the United States, Canada, Europe, your home country, coming and going from Costa Rica, well, you absolutely need to look at locations that are close to one of the country's current two airports. There's one in San Jose, where you can get out to Jaco quickly. There's one in Liberia, Guanacaste, where you can get out to a ton of beaches out here. If you plan on living that lifestyle where maybe once a month you have to report back to a corporation in the US, or where you want to go up and see grandkids frequently, you should start by immediately looking around one of those airports to make life easy, because very few people enjoy traveling all the way to, to Costa Rica only to drive another six or seven hours to get to their home. That all being said, let me give you a quick overview of Costa Rica region by region so that you can get ideas as to where might be best for you. Let's start on the east side on the Caribbean, which has not seen nearly as much expat development as the western Pacific side for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, the Caribbean beaches are much further from an international airport than the Guanacaste and Central Pacific beaches. From San Jose out to the Caribbean and the sand itself is going to be five or six hours, whereas in Guanacaste and Punta Arenas, the southern Pacific province of Costa Rica, you have easy access at two different spots. The Caribbean has also not attracted as many expats because their rainy season is more intense. Their security situation tends to be a bit more dicey, especially once you get out of those uh, small communities and into the larger urban areas. And that largely is related to the fact that, simply put, that side of the country is easier for drug traffickers to use. That all being said, there are some wonderfully blossoming communities on the Caribbean side. Puerto Viejo has also always been the hub over there, and a lot of expats love it for the Caribbean flair, the relaxed atmosphere, and the incredible surf there. Guanacaste, on the other hand, in the northwestern corner of Costa Rica, is a place that has been almost overrun, in some people's opinions, with foreigners moving here. And you find that the infrastructure, amenities, and more in Guanacaste are what can attract a lot of people here. We have paved roads to most of the major beaches, which isn't that uncommon in Costa Rica, but we also have enormous supermarkets, private schools, uh, all kinds of amenities that were designed specifically to meet demand from expats. You also find in Guanacaste that the region's dry season can either be one of the biggest pros or the biggest cons that draw or repel people here. From January through April, this is probably the only spot in Costa Rica where you have such low relative humidity, where you see the deciduous forest lose its leaves, conditions dry out, and where the breezes, temperatures, etc. create this stark dry season. Guanacaste is a great spot for people escaping winter because in those months you're guaranteed there will not be rain. As we move south to the Central Pacific and Punta Arenas, you find a lot of great expat communities that are larger and growing than most of the small beach communities along the coast. Down by uh, Jaco, you've seen a lot of growth in Uvita, Dominical area, and Capos. Down there, you're seeing that the new highway, the easy access to the international airport, and really not such a stark contrast between the dry and rainy has begun to attract, attract a lot of expats as well. And finally, the Central Valley, high altitudes, high levels of development. It's essentially the urban central, uh, central part of Costa Rica, where 70 to 80 percent of the Costa Rican population lives. If you want bigger, denser communities, but also that cooler, breezier, really mild weather, the Central Valley could be for you. If you want more information on finding the right location, I talk about that process in this video. Tune in.